This episode of Brains on Games is about a cooperative pick up and deliver game about running an airline. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode, like I said, now that the world is opening up and people are getting back on flights again, we're going to talk about a game that's about running an airline. Not too long ago, Tim Fowers, the designer of a game I talked about before, Paperback, sent me a copy of this game, Now Boarding. Now Boarding is a cooperative game, like I said. You can play it with between two and five players. It works with kids age 10 and up, and you can play a game in half an hour to 60 minutes. Like I said, this is a pick up and deliver game, meaning that you've got this map of the United States here, this is your board, and you're going to be carrying passengers in your airplanes from one airport to another. You get a little bit of geographical knowledge here and maybe a little bit of information about the abbreviations that are used for different airports. This was a little bit confusing for my son because we're Canadian, so so we don't, (laughs) he doesn't necessarily know the geography of the US and he kept calling this airport Orlando This is actually in Chicago. It's O'Hare, but O-R-D had enough letters that it seemed more like Orlando to him. But really, the only Florida airport that we have on the board is in Miami. It's a double-sided board, so the opposite side has a couple more paths, and that's for four or five players. This is the two to three player board that I've laid out here. And you can see that there are different paths that are labeled and different planes can access some of these labeled paths, but not others, and we'll talk about how all of that works. It is a cooperative game, so the players are all going to be working together. So similar to a game like Pandemic, which is a more advanced or complicated, maybe cooperative game, but this adds some elements that I think are really great for the younger kids and really great for developing the ability to work under pressure. That's the resource that I'll talk about at the end of the show. I found a good article about working under pressure. Each player in this game is going to have his own little airplane that he's going to be operating. I'll put it here on the board so you can see it. I'll try and put it out of the way. You've got a tail which shows which of the special paths you can access and you've got the cockpit. These are characters from Burgle Bros, which is probably my favorite Tim Fowers game, but I really like this one as well. Uh, On the back of the cockpit, it shows the starting airport for that player. And you've got these great little, let me grab one. You've got these great little airplane meeples. And so he's going to start right over here at Dallas Fort Worth and we'll put his meeple on the board. You also start with a seat for your plane. So at the beginning of the game, you can carry only one passenger at a time. The seat goes right in between those two things. And then you've got the turbine that tells how far your plane can move on a turn. And that just goes right on top. At the beginning of the game, players also get to choose one upgrade. They can either increase their speed by one, meaning that they can move a little bit further on the board, or they can increase their passenger capacity by one so that they can carry an extra passenger and that might help them earn more money by the end of the game. So we'll put the seating upgrade on here. You just slide your airplane across like that and now you've got an extra seat. I can carry two passengers. The speed just goes right underneath this turbine and now I can move four spaces. But you can also upgrade these later on in the game. I'll get this one out of the way and we'll put it back like this. At the top of the board, you're also going to have this card that says pre-flight at the top. And this tells you based on the number of players how you're going to set the board up, how many passengers you're going to draw each turn to be picked up at the various airports, what uh, weather conditions are going to be like, you name it. Uh, It's all here on the pre-flight checklist. You've got spots for morning passengers, afternoon and evening, and those are the three rounds of the game. And it gets progressively harder as you go to keep up with all of the passengers that are going to be coming out on the board and trying to carry them from one place to the next. As I mentioned, weather is going to be a factor and you've got a little deck of these weather cards at the beginning of the morning, like when we played our two player game, you draw two of these cards and that might mean that there's going to be a storm. That's the first thing you do is you put out a storm and that's going to slow things down. So the weather card tells I'll put it right on top of my plane, tells which route you are going to put that storm on and you've got these little storm tokens. This one would go right over here like this. Now look what it's done. I think this is so neat how they did this. 
it shows that the storm is going to slow you down. You've got two movement spots here instead of just one. See how it's replacing one of those movements? So that means that you need to spend some extra time to get through a storm on the route from LA to Miami. The other weather card, the second one that you draw in a two-player game, is going to have a tailwind, which means that you're going to be able to move faster. In this case, it's from Dallas-Fort Worth to Miami, and that's a good one for me because my purple plane can take this route. It's going to cover up one of the movement spaces, and that means I'm going to be able to get there a little bit faster. Your pre-flight list tells you how many cards are going to be in the stack for each of those times of day. So there are going to be, for our two player game that we play, uh, it, you're, there are going to be three in the stack in the morning. That's how long that, that round of the game is going to last. There's 10 in the pile in the afternoon and then the rest of the cards, 27 cards in the evening. And then you draw in the evening, three at a time are going to come out somewhere across the board. At the beginning of the game, things are a little slower and a little bit more calm, but it gets more and more complicated with each round that you play. You've got these little cards and these are your passengers. They tell you where they're going to start from. And at the beginning of the game, you place one passenger in the airport uh, that belongs to each player, the starting point for each player. So in this case, there just so happens to be a Dallas-Fort Worth card here at the top, and I'll put it down here on the map. So what this says is that this passenger starts in Dallas and he wants to move over here to San Francisco and if you get him there, you're going to earn $3 that you can spend on upgrades during another phase of the game. You're also going to place a certain number of passengers face down at various airports. So in this case, this guy's gonna be in Colorado. I'll put his card here. Again, I'm covering up the board. You're meant to put these around the outside of the board, but with my little camera, I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see if I don't cover up a portion of the board. So those start face down. In the morning phase, you're, you're only putting one of those out at a time. There are a couple at a time in the afternoon, and then it's three every turn uh, in the evening. Of course, I've set the board up here for only one player, but it's a cooperative game, so you need at least two players in order to cooperate. And you can start before the turn begins. You can plan ahead what it is you want to do. Discuss with the other players how you're going to approach that turn. You've got some information that's going to be face up so you know where this guy's going, for example. Before the turn, you don't know where this person wants to go. If you go to Denver to pick him up, you don't know where your plane is supposed to fly after that. So there's a little bit of known information and some unknown information. Once you've come up with your plan for the turn and you're going to be counting up, okay, I can move three, so if I pick this guy up, I, I'm only going to be able to get up, up to this airport, and but I've got two spaces, so I can pick that guy up too, and then I'm going to try... Anyway, you're going to be planning all of that stuff out, but once the turn begins, there is a timer. This is a, a sand timer that's a, approximately two minutes. So at the beginning of the game, when there are only a few passengers, it's pretty easy. And we found that we were completing our turn before the time ran out. By the time we got to the evening phase, though, it was a frantic race to get everything done that we wanted to do and make sure that we got passengers where they needed to go. When you're ready to start your turn, you flip that sand timer over then you can flip over the face down passengers and we see this is going to be perfect. This guy wants to go to LA. So if I pick up this passenger and put him in my plane and then I move one, two, three to this airport, I can pick up the second guy. And then on my next turn, I'm going to be able to go out west and drop those people off. And by the end of the next turn, I should be able to earn or the turn after that, depending on how many spaces I can move, I should be able to earn $5. What do you do with those $5 though? So once the time runs out, the flight round is done and you're going to get into the maintenance phase of the game. And the maintenance phase is when you can upgrade your plane. So you can flip over the pre-flight card and then it tells you the prices of all the different things that you might want to do on, on your next turn so that you can increase the capacity of your plane or the speed or the routes that they can travel on. There are a couple of spaces here that say temp and those are pretty cheap and that might mean that you could add a temporary seat that will disappear at the end of your turn or you can add plus one speed temporarily that at the end of the next turn that will go away as well. 
but you've also got those turbines that I showed you at the beginning. You can increase your speed by one or by two and it shows you the prices here or I've got a big stack of those seats. You can add those as well if you have enough money, but that's part of the problem with this game. You're never going to have enough money to buy all of the things you need or that you'd like to have. The other thing you see down here are prices for various routes that you can add to your plane. So you've got these little uh, cards as well and they would just go behind your tail. I'll put one underneath. So this would show that if I've spent $7, I can now go on those little green paths with the A on them. But I might not want to do that this turn. I might instead try and get the orange one because I'm heading in this direction towards the west. So if I had the money, I might get that orange pathway so that I can go down here to LA and I can cross over to Miami and take what might be a shortcut for me to get all the way across the country again. Once you're done the maintenance phase, you flip that card back over again and then you're ready to draw however many new passengers need to be added to the board. Now you're starting with a pile of three and each turn here you're going to be adding one passenger at a time. This round will end and you'll start moving on to the next one when you can no longer draw new passengers from the pile that's going to be here beside the pre-flight card and then you'll move into the afternoon and you'll find eventually the board is going to be a little crowded with passengers. Many of them will be face up because you'll flip them over at the beginning of your turn. I'll put a few here on the board so that you can see. Now it seems easy enough. You're just counting up spaces and moving your plane meeple across the board, picking up passengers and dropping them off. How do you win this game? Well, you, you have to finish the game with few complaints and I'll tell you what that's all about because it's very easy to lose this game and that's what we found was quite complicated by the time we got to the end. One of the things that happened to us is that very often we'd spend some cash because we weren't earning very much cash from one turn to the next but we'd get a temporary seat so we could pick up one extra person or we try and increase our speed by one and, and then at the end of the game myself especially my plane wasn't upgraded enough to handle all of the things that were going on because I had spent cash on those temporary things. So you really do need to budget in this game. But as you go on, you're going to have some passengers who are face up. And before you draw the new passengers, you have to add these little red tokens, these cubes to these guys. And these are anger cubes. So your passengers are angry about being left in the airport to wait because no plane has picked them up yet. If you get four anger cubes on one of these passengers, they're going to lodge a complaint. They come off the board and if you've got three complaints against you, that's it, it's game over. Uh, you're all finished. So you really have to keep track of how many of these little tokens are on the passengers who are waiting. You can get tricky about it because if I pick up somebody who's in one airport and even if I drop them off at the wrong airport, they'll lose all of their anger tokens uh, while they're waiting for their connecting flight. They'll start to build up again, but you can sort of be tricky about it and pick a person up in Miami and drop them off here rather than going all the way across the country. The idea is in this game, you really have to cooperate and work together with the other players because you, you can only move so far on your turn. It's going to take you a couple of turns maybe to get across the country if you're trying to bring someone from Miami to LA you might drop them off here and then another player could pick them up and carry them the rest of the way. Clearly you're doing lots of planning and budgeting here because you never quite have enough money to do the upgrades or enough movement point speed to move across as far as you would like to go. That's something that I found at the beginning it was fine but at the end when there were a whole bunch of passengers and these cubes were piling up and they were getting closer to those complaints it started to become really challenging and, and like I said because I spent some money on these temporary upgrades earlier in the game I didn't have that money to spend on permanent upgrades so I could carry three people at a time and start maybe reserving one of my seats to pick up an angry passenger and just drop them somewhere else on the board so that we wouldn't get those complaints. Lots of cooperation is required so you are working on those social skills of cooperating, sharing your ideas, accepting other people's ideas, and you're sharing the wealth here too because you are maybe helping someone else by picking, you're helping the whole team, obviously, but maybe you're helping someone else by dropping off a passenger that they can pick up and deliver to the destination so that they have enough money to make the upgrades that are going to help the entire team to win the game. And it does get crazy at the end. And what makes it extra frantic 
is that timer. You might, when you're first starting the game, play some rounds without the timer just to get the hang of it. Uh, we found, I mean, we're pretty familiar with these kinds of board games, so my son and I started right away with this two-minute thing. And at first, like I said, it was relaxed and easy, and at the end, it was much more frantic. And we were counting the number of spaces we had and really discussing things and planning ahead. But I'll tell you what, there's a memory component too, because I come up with the plan, then the timer starts, we're flipping everything over, and then you have to remember, well, what was it I said I was going to do? And every once in a while, one of us would pick up the wrong passenger. Oops, we wanted to pick up this other one and then we've already moved on and it's too late and the plan gets a little bit disrupted. Once you run out of passengers to draw in the final evening phase of the game, you wrap things up, you finish that turn and then that's it. But here's where it gets tricky for every two passengers that you have left who's not at the proper destination, you get one complaint. So you divide the number of remaining passengers by two and you're going to get that many complaints. So it is a real challenge. You do have to plan ahead and you really, really have to cooperate in order to win this game. And I'll tell you what, we've played a few times and we came pretty close to winning, but we weren't able to win one yet. So I haven't quite cracked the code on Now Boarding, but it is definitely a game that I want to play again. And that is Now Boarding in a Nutshell, a cooperative pick up and deliver game that has that time pressure and working under time pressure is the other skill I mentioned at the beginning. Working under time pressure is a really great thing to learn about. Most of the research for working under pressure is done with executives or professional athletes, but now some of those strategies are being applied for things like uh, completing exams within time limits. Uh, and, and that becomes, I've learned, that becomes more important as you get up into the college and university level and you're doing entrance exams that are on a strict time limit. So you don't always get extra time for those things. But you've got the executive functioning skills, you've got cooperation and sharing, and then you've got working under time pressure. Thanks again to Tim Fowers for sending this game along. I really appreciate that. And if you have questions about Now Boarding or any of the other games that we've talked about on the show, you can leave a comment beneath this video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go and the previous episodes are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we are all over the place. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.